The wait is finally over. The Atari 7800 is here. Atari sent me the 7800 Plus and a bunch of 7800 games in a special VIP box set. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna test a bunch of things, accessories, games, homebrew, aftermarket, and more. So sit back, relax. Here we go. So here's the VIP package that Atari sent me in a really nice custom box. And if you're curious about what the 7800 Plus comes with, uh, it typically comes with Bentley Bears Crystal Quest, a wireless 7800 control pad, and the console. And for $130, it is on sale right now, Black Friday sale, you can check it out at the website. And the games shown here are sold individually as well for 30 bucks. So you can get the Bentley Bear Crystal Quest and you get that separate for 30 bucks, awesome. All the games they sell are working and compatible with original hardware as well, including the wireless control pad sold separately as well. So people that have original hardware, that's the dongle that you plug into the console to make it work and it's fantastic. There's that Bentley Bears Crystal Quest. Comes with a sleeve, a paper sleeve, as well as box and manual. All for 30 bucks per game. And then there is Bounty Bob Strikes Back, Robert De Crescenzo. That's his latest game. Fantastic, can't wait to show you. Got to play that at PRGE. These are the uh, USB-C cables. One to plug into an outlet, which a power brick is not included, HDMI cable is, and a charging cable for the controllers, or if you only have one, you can use the same for both. Here are the flattened boxes that came with this VIP package. Pretty awesome looking boxes, and they line up right with the original releases. Really nice to see that. And so what is your favorite 7800 game? Uh, in the comments, let me know. And if you're new to my channel, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. Can't wait to show you and test this and see, does it live up to the expectations? You know, the 2600 plus was a great device and this is supposedly a little bit better hardware wise with uh, a few improvements. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and gonna test it, gonna test it like I did the 2600 plus. Here's a size comparison. Here's an original 7800 that I've had in my collection a long time. It's the 7800 plus is 20% smaller than the original 7800. They did a great job of the design of it. It does have a European faceplate. if you're wondering why it looks different. Here it is compared to the 2600 plus. It is a little bit smaller than that. So it's nice and sleek and compact. And here is that wireless controller. I forgot to mention that the controllers also come with a USB-A adapter for PC use. So you can use this on original hardware, 2600 plus, 7800 plus, as well as PC. Pretty awesome. For people that wanna update their 2600 plus or future 7800 plus firmware updates, Atari is gonna make this super easy and offer a simple way where you can go to the website, plug in your console to a PC, and it's gonna be super simple. It's not gonna be as complicated as it has been recently with experimental updates on Atari Age. The firmware that came with this 7800 Plus was already 2.01. By pressing select and reset without a game in the console, you have these new modes, 50 hertz mode, bilinear filter, phosphor, two button, as well as some other features, pretty awesome. There's a 16 by nine and four three aspect ratio switch on the back of the console. And by pressing it, you can determine how you want it displayed on your screen, monitor, whatever you're playing on. And this is Bentley Bears Crystal Quest and it's absolutely fantastic. It's definitely uh, kind of, for me, it's like a combination between like a Super Mario Brothers and a Wonder Boy uh, platformer action, many secrets, lots of neat graphics and color. It's, it's, it's wonderful and it utilizes both buttons. I'm not playing too great here. Beat this many years ago. And what I love about this is these homebrew games are being offered alongside 
official Atari releases. And Robert De Crescenzo, he's a master programmer for the Atari 7800. This is one of his masterpieces, and to have it see it bundled in with the 7800 Plus is simply fantastic. And it is a must play. There's boss fights, excellent color and utilization. It really showed what the 7800 was capable of. You know, this to me uh, is right alongside a Sega Master System or a Nintendo platformer of the day, especially in 86. And um, wow, just looks just great. And it's a must play, highly recommend it. And it's a wonderful pack in to demonstrate what the 7800 is capable of. Then you got Frenzy, which was done by Robert De Crescenzo as well, and just simply fantastic. Different modes, one and two player, cooperative, um, just awesome version of the arcade classic. And uh, really a lot to enjoy here. All these games that I'm showing, uh, these new releases are 30 bucks each, even on sale for Black Friday. So uh, for people that are wanting to get these games, if you have original hardware and may want to go that route, or even if you have the 2600 plus, again, the 2600 plus also plays these with updates. The firmware update that I showed earlier, as well as even the experimental mods will make you play these homebrew and aftermarket games. Then you have Space Duel, another one Robert did. Uh, just awesome to see him finally get the credit and recognition that he deserves for everything he's done for the Atari 7800 community and all the games he's programmed for the 2600 and 7800. And uh, here's another one. Then they have weird games like Ninja Golf that shouldn't be any fun, but it's absolutely brilliant idea of essentially having like a side-scrolling ninja game combined with a golf game and it actually works it's just truly bizarre and really glad that atari has re-released this affordably food fight is definitely in my top 10 for original atari 7800 releases with the instant replay and uh just some really fun gameplay and i was a big fan of the original arcade release uh but i definitely enjoyed playing the 7800 version and I'm really glad it's offered, again, for an affordable price. Then you have Asteroid Selux, which plays a lot like uh, Space Duel. And, uh, you know, uh, Robert did many, many arcade classics and ports that weren't official. And now they are, because Atari is publishing these. And uh, pretty nice to see this. And then you have Fatal Run, which isn't my favorite game. But some may have vivid and fond memories of this game. Uh, for me, I'd rather, rather play stuff like Pole Position or a different racing game. Then you have the new one from Robert, and that's Bounty Bob Strikes Back. And I know this is going to be popular. This was a popular computer game, as well as Atari 5200. Uh, pretty challenging platformer. Really enjoy this one. And it is so well done on the Atari 7800. And uh, it's really nice to see... Uh, this being offered on this platform as I know there's going to be a lot of fans of it. As a 2600 plus did not play any 7800 homebrew and aftermarket games out of the box, the 7800 has firmware that's been applied already and I'm going to share with you what works and what doesn't. First up, Pac-Man Collection with that Yamaha sound. Let's listen. Oh, sounds so good. Love hearing that. There was a special aftermarket release of Donkey Kong, and it added uh, Yamaha sound as well, and it's just absolutely fantastic. It's just so much better than that original release. All four screens, lots of cool extra things added into this release. A lot of hard work, and want to thank everybody involved. Then you have cool stuff like Blockum Sockum, programmed by Daryl G. Daryl, you're awesome. Thank you so much. And that Yamaha sound, wow. It just really makes this game amazing. And this is one of the advantages of playing homebrew games, especially that utilize Yamaha sound on the 7800 Plus. This is not an option for people just with standard hardware, because it only is gonna play Tia sound. But on the 7800 Plus and the 2600 Plus, 
it can emulate Yamaha sound. It looks and sounds fantastic. This game will be available in the Atari Age store eventually. I had a limited supply of 30 copies on physical and uh, posted some of my extras already on Atari Age. Just a few left. Some other after aftermarket games I tested, Beef Drop, and uh, played great, sounded great. Astro Blaster, another one Robert did, absolutely fantastic. I'm a big fan of this release. And then Super Circus At Atari Age, and you know what? This one plays great with the joystick, but it doesn't control at all with the paddles. I don't know what I'm doing. And I had a couple original parts not working, Rampage. And my double dragon cart didn't work. And I was really shocked that this happened because uh, this was a firmware update with the 2600 plus and it, those both work. Um, I did test them on original hardware. My carts both worked fine on that. I did use a dragonfly cart, which loads ROMs individually. That's why it works. Unfortunately, this is sold out and pretty expensive now because it's out of print. But Rampage the ROM works. Interesting. I also did test Ricky and Vicky and that did not work. Also, here are some other carts that I did test. As some of you are very curious about Pitfall 2. Pitfall 2 works great. I have a couple of the filters on. So that's why it looks a little fuzzy. But works great. Nice to see that. I know a lot of people were wondering if this ever was going to work. And it does. And with the update, the 2600 Plus will be able to play it as well. Princess Rescue, this is essentially a demake of Super Mario Brothers. Uh, at least with a single button controller, I was able to get that to work. And that was nice. Zippy the Porcupine, Sonic the Hedgehog, fantastic demake, by the way. Um, I'm a big fan of these. Uh, I've shown them on my channel before. I cover a lot of things Atari on my channel and in the 500 so the driving controller is fully compatible and works really good really enjoyed this and was really happy to see this as uh, some people were really requesting it then my own published homebrews uh, these are 2600 games the gematronic program catacomb to chaos fantastic game also on the atari vcs a roguelite and game panic 3 Parcel success and plays a little bit like the Donkey Kong Jr. Game and Watch uh, in a Clico tabletop. I offer these digitally on itch.io along with my other homebrew and aftermarket games, as well as sell limited physical releases at conventions. And you can also hit me up on Atari Age. Uh, my username is SW11S. I did my best to test some major accessories, I wasn't able to get to everything. Uh, Stay Frosty 2 worked with a single button joystick, but the but even enabling it on the menu for two buttons, it didn't work with my Genesis controller. The trackball and joystick mode worked, but I didn't have any of the trackball hacks. Uh, Atari is saying that they're working on it. Uh, Missile Command trackball doesn't work yet, but the, some of the other ones do. Using the 7800 Mega Controller Adapter, I was able to get a Genesis 3 button and uh, a Sega Master System as well as 6 button uh, controllers to work. On 7800 games I tested Xevious and two buttons were activated. Also want to mention that the hardware of the 7800 Plus has been updated including an improved socket, a cartridge dumper, and these will be available to purchase in Atari age for people that want to upgrade their 2600 plus. For people old school and want to play with the Pro Controller, it does work. I'm not a big fan of that whatsoever. I've been spoiled with playing with these new wireless control pads. But if you want to go that route and that's what you got, uh, yeah, pole position 2 works fine. Paddles seem to work pretty good. There was a slight, slight jitter with the new versions of paddles. I don't know what that was about, but it was slight. Um, definitely could still use them. Uh, I noticed that with the original paddles, which now you're seeing the original paddles, it just seemed like it was a little bit smoother. I don't know what that's about. It was just so ever slight, 
but I did want to mention that. Mostly noticed it in this game. I did test Kaboom as well, um, and it seemed to be playing a little bit better. I don't know. It's just hard to tell. It's, it's very slight. I did my best to cover this as best as possible. So what do I think of it? I think it's a lot better than the Atari 2600 Plus out of the box. And it's nice that Atari is updating the 2600 Plus as well. So my thoughts are, I think you can choose either one and you're going to be fine. I think they're close enough where most people are going to get either or. I think serious collectors out there like the cosmetic differences or maybe that wireless controller, which you can purchase separately. And you can check that out on original hardware or your 2600 plus. And you know what? I think there's a lot of things to like about the 7800 plus. Is it perfect? No. It's a lot better though. Atari has really considered and improved upon some of the shortcomings of the 2600 plus. There are a few still out there that they can improve with this, but overall it gets a thumbs up. I think this is a solid purchase for anybody that's into Atari retro or you know that middle-aged person that wants something cool to check out wants to play old school i think the 7800 plus is a solid choice especially that amazing pack-in game and that wireless controller those are some nice modern features and overall i think they did a good job so thank you so much for viewing this channel if you like what you see and you like atari or maybe anything anything from atari to xbox i cover many things on my channel and I would love for you to stay around and check out some of my other videos. Thank you so much for coming. If you like what you see, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. Folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you take care.